Let me welcome you once again to Bottom Line. Bottom Line, we say business at the speed of thought. And uh, let me say a very good evening to you as well, wherever you're watching us from. This is Metro TV, and we are coming your way live from our studios here at Rage in Accra. And this, again, is the Bottom Line, where we discuss um, business in every sense of it, whether it's in the space of education, aviation, agriculture, economics, or whatever it is that you want to talk about in the space of business, you find the best of its analysis here on the bottom line. And we are live here in the studio tonight. I think um, we've come your way this year, but um, I haven't personally been with you this year in a live show, so let me officially um, say a happy new year to you um, from wherever you watch us from. And tonight, we have a very interesting topic. We say driving economic growth through strategic trade initiatives. Um, we'll delve into it. We have an expert who is coming here into the studio to divulge this issue for us. How, as a continent, not only in Ghana here, but other parts of um, the continent, both in, uh, all in West Africa, all in Southern Africa, Eastern Africa, Northern Africa, how do we come together as something like the European Union, which is promoting the economic development agenda of Europe, to be able to do the same. We've had ECOWAS, we've had um, AU, we've had even after being situated here in, uh, on the premises of our land. And um, how are we using all of, it, of this and how is it impacting the economic growth of the continent? Tonight, we have somebody who is well vexed in this area to take us through the impact of what we've done so far as a continent, and then tell us what we can do as a continent to experience growth, both in our personal lives, um, somebody would say in, in the microeconomic stature, and then others would say in the macro, on the, on, the, on the larger national economic front. So tonight, it's a very special night. Our expert is coming from what we call the Africa Prosperity network. We'll ask him also what Africa Prosperity Network is and what they seek to do, how they seek to support the entire economy to grow, what they've been doing so far and how. Moving forward, when we call him back in the next one year, um, what kind of questions should we be asking him what he's been able to do in the next one year ahead of us or two years ahead of us? We'll keep engaging him, but you want to stick and stay with us and see who we are hosting tonight. Before we do that, let me take a quick break. When we come back, there is an event we'll play for you for just about two minutes, and I engage my guest. Stay with us. For the first decade, if it's going to work, then there must be that push within the first 10 years as in between 2021 and 2031. Because if we can't get it right now, we will never get it right. And it's the biggest project since 61 years ago we formed the OAU. And it's just opportune, and it's also not by accident that Ghana hosts the Secretariat. We all know the vision of Kwame Nkrumah and others. Okay, so if you have the Secretariat here, we thought it was even incumbent on us to find a way to make sure that it can be supported and it can be driven. But we also think that if it's going to, yes, the political leadership have come out with this idea of creating what will be the world's largest single market right here in Africa. But the idea of a single market is about what? It's about the economy. And who are the drivers of the economy? It's the private sector. So we thought that it was important to find a way to let the private sector on the continent own AFCFTA and drive it. But in order for them to own and drive it, it must be done in partnership with the political leadership. So in a sense that, yes, 
for the first time in many decades, we've seen, I don't think that we've seen a protocol or any instrument that got the kind of enthusiastic support of our leadership like what we got with the AFCFTA. The AU recognizes that the conversations that take place at the Africa Prosperity Dialogues between business leaders and political leaders is relevant to pushing the AFCFTA agenda. Okay, so let's not be, let, let it not be lost on us in terms of the importance of the conversations that we are, we are, having, we are having here. Well, so I'm, I'm sure you all well know Gabi, uh, sorry, Oshay Dakun, um, who was speaking in that um, video, talking about the need uh, to support the private sector, what we've always been talking about, that, um, of course, in partnership with governments, he says um, political partnerships, what we believe here, that in partnerships with governments, because we have consistently said that it is the business of government to create a conducive environment for the private sector to thrive and for, for economics, economies to grow. Government is only steering the affairs and not its business. We have an expert here who will ask him that right away and get into our discussions. Jack Khan is the Acting Chief Executive Officer of Africa Prosperity Network. Good evening and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I hope you're doing very well. Okay. I, I was just looking at the name and analyzing. Where are you from? Are you from Ghana here? I am from, uh, when, when I'm asked a question, I must admit that I take time to answer mm, to the question right, because right. I'm from Mauritania. Mm. My father's from Mauritania, mother from Senegal, mm. where I'm from the Senegal River. Mm. I grew up in Switzerland, mm -hmm. and I like to say that Ghana has somehow become one of my second homes. You're so, multinational, actually, but then Ghana is your home now. And you've been here for how long? Or your uh, first time coming in here? No, I, I started coming in this country in 2007. Mm. And uh, this is from there that I've been, I have kept very strong links with mm. Ghana mm. throughout 2007. Mm. So I would say that I've been spending maybe two months per year over in Ghana uh, over the last uh, 18 years or so. 18 years, at least two months a year. That's, that's well over consistently well over, over, or cumulatively, well over a year or two living in Ghana. And what have you been doing? Uh, working with APN? APN came just a few oh, years oh, ago. Oh, I, I, joined, I joined APN about uh, now uh, four months ago mm -hmm. uh, to, to help deliver on the Africa Prosperity Dialogues. Mm that will be held in January mm. of this year. So it has been a lot of work meeting a beautiful team um, around a beautiful vision. And I must say that uh, when I was asked to come and lead the Secretariat, it was so obvious for me to accept because the vision is absolutely powerful and it is important that we have our own African space to be able to nurture, push, develop these ideas that will truly lead to transformation. So let me now go straight to the point, and I'll come back to the video about the, the, the speech of um, um, Gabi Ochedakun, who was in the video. When we say African prosperity dialogue, which you were just talking about, that you've been commissioned to make sure it becomes a reality, What's, what is it about? Africa Prosperity Dialogues is the flagship event that is yearly held here in Ghana. It's going to be the second edition. Mm. And the dialogues are the flagship project of the Secretariat. And it is a partnership between the Presidency of the Republic of Ghana, the AFCFTA Secretariat, mm -hmm and the Africa Prosperity uh, Secretariat, to which a number of institutional partners have joined in, the UN system, UNDP, ECA, 
and a number of uh, various uh, institutions, foundation, uh, to which more recently have joined development partner institutions such mm -hmm. as the Africa Development Bank, mm -hmm. Afrexim Bank, mm -hmm. Badea. Mm -hmm. So, so it is really a, a so the APD is really that convenient space where policy leaders and private sector debate in a retreat for a period of two days, to which the second, the third day, uh, as the conclusion calls, um, is the, a meeting of the heads of states and business leaders to agree on a compact based on the series of discussions ahead of the summit, during the summit, and on the final day, they, 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 are, they are coming to agree on a compact. Uh, and by compact, an agreement to push a common agenda that is taken, that will be taken for the second time to the AU for recommendation, once agreed, recommendation for implementation. Recommendations on one. So let me ask, what exactly do you seek to achieve? I, I see very important stakeholders that you mentioned. You mentioned heads of states, you mentioned um, very serious stakeholders like AFDB, you mentioned Exim Bank, you mentioned the private sector, you mentioned some other leaders who come together to put your minds together, all on the economic growth agenda of, of, of Africa, the African continent. But what specifically, and in which area specifically, you submit these to EU, and I'll come to some of the agreements we've had as even a country, Ghana, with EU, where some of us believe we've been shortchanged. If you look at the trade agreements that we've had, we cannot, we are supposed to export, for example, raw materials. They have their standards and regulations, and we export the raw materials, and they get returned back. We have Agua, for example, with, with the U.S., and in that same trade agreement, we export things, and sometimes they get returned back. How, what exactly do you seek to achieve? APN, APD, bringing all of these sets of states together and putting out a communique and sending it to EU to do what? It's a, it's a good question. Uh, again, I think it will really depend on the quality of the dialogues. Mm -hmm. To be able within a safe space on the African continent, among Africans, to be really able to discuss what are the issues, but also what are the solutions, what does work very well, what needs to be fixed, what needs to be highlighted, and that needs to be uh, scaled. Uh, we mentioned about uh, Policy leaders. Mm -hmm. Policy will be critical in the implementation. Yes, you said it earlier. We have in the agriculture the best agriculture program called the CADAP. But and no other continent has it. Our challenge is implementation. I fully agree. Agoa that you have mentioned, it's basically an opportunity to export our goods to the U.S. Mm. at a preferred tariff. Mm. It is important because it helps to create a market. So now you are talking at the same time about performance. Mm. That's another discussion. Mm. Whether we are able to take advantage of this advantage, that it is incentive, I think is another question. But I don't think that it means that these agreements are not good. Now, coming to the AFCFTA, it is critical. You know, I would like to say that what is the most important is to secure a market. When a market is secured for our locally produced goods, at some kind of an advantage. Let, let's face it. Do you really think that the gay, that Ghana will be self-sufficient in rice production and has potential to export, do you really think that our rice will be going to Thailand or to China <laughs> or to the U.S.? Obviously not. It is, it is after that will create the market in Africa for Ghana rice. That is it. But that are, we, are we getting there? I mean, 
for you personally. You're well versed in the area, in the area of our Greek. And because of what you said, I'll, I'll veer a bit into our Greek. Whether the African leaders actually understand the process of development, I mean, coming together to sit down and think of how to develop our continent, the process of development where we need to expand and uh, mechanize our agriculture and produce well enough to get into industrialization and then into technology, do, do they really understand these processes that they come together and sit and they make their recommendations and so on and so forth? But just before you come to that, do you think that after is on course? That after is on course? Yeah, well, yes, yes. Not, not, nothing of this can really start before there is a framework. Let us not see the Secretariat of AFCFTA be responsible for performance. What okay. they have to provide, and they did provide, is the framework. Let's take an example of a highway. Mm. That's the infrastructure itself of the highway. Then there are the people that will be using that highway. And just to give an image, you have the barriers on the side that could not stop from a truck to go out. But this is what the AFCTA mm. is about, mm. putting barriers, incentive, so that it facilitates. But it is to the private sector to implement. I mean, our goods are flowing through countries. It's just that... There are still some countries that are hesitant, <laughs> being very protective of their, of their local market, local industries. Even in Ghana here, we face the same. We, when the borders are being opened up, we have some of our trade institutions coming up to say, hey, no, don't go there. This is preserved for Ghanaians. You have the same in Nigeria. Even Nigeria signing on into, onto the agreement was, came with a bit of a difficulty. But, but I, I fully agree, but I believe that if you take the specific examples, same would apply to the ECOWAS exactly. agreement. Exactly. On the I same agree. matter. I agree. I agree. I, and you see, that the, the issue is that we are operating at various levels. We, one thing is sure is that at least at the country region, you don't have issues of goods moving from a region to another within Ghana. Mm. The idea that there is no issue if you want to move, there should be no issue if you want to move goods from the Ashanti region to the northern region in Ghana. So because there's a, a, a framework at country level. Mm. At ECOWAS level, countries are still looking at their own individual interest. What you mentioned applies for Ghana. There has been, uh, I mean Ghana, I said Ghana, but this would be valid for all the other countries. Say that at some times it is why the tomato from Burkina mm -hmm. are moving from Burkina into Ghana. Mm -hmm. and Even onion. Onion is coming onions, from Onions, yes. so you, you, you can mention. Mm. Uh, and, and there are complaints about this because the farmer in the northern region are complaining that they don't have markets for their production. But the same would apply on the other side that there has been restriction of exports of the goods produced in Ghana to go to the other regions during these issues of food crisis, of COVID, mm -hmm. and sometimes... Uh, so, so there is also the issue of quality. Maybe you want to add that yes. one. Quality uh, of, of, of the product. Absolutely. Quality, are they adapted? Um, we keep importing tomato. Tomato. Mm. We are importing... I, I, I'm, I'm talking about Ghana, but again, I want to say that it is the same. We take tomato. Mm. Uh, we consume in Ghana 90% of the tomato that we are consuming, industrial tomato, mm. the, the concentrate. Mm that we are consuming is coming from China. While there is tomato, it means that the tomato that are produced by the farmers are not adapted, the value chain is not robust, but mostly a policy issue. Mm. Take chicken. 78% of the chicken consumed is Ghana, is, in Ghana is it's imported. Important. 
it was the same in Côte d'Ivoire, mm -hmm. in Senegal. Mm -hmm. But if you take the specific cases of Senegal, Senegal is not importing one kilo of chicken anymore. Mm -hmm. The same for Côte d'Ivoire. What has happened? They have put together a policy restricting the imports of frozen chicken from outside. Within three years, they have reached the level of self-sufficiency. Now, why hasn't it been done? It's maybe a long answer, but I would say that Ghana was not able to seize the opportunity Côte d'Ivoire and Senegal seized at the time of the bird flu to be able to restrict, for this reason, the imports. But, but the, the, the issue has also been about, of course, I'm not supporting... Uh, uh, the, the government on this one, but has also been about the issue of demand and supply for, for you people in, in the trade area or the business area, that at the time you want to restrict these imports with, with policy, with rules, with regulations, your local producers don't have the capacity to produce enough to meet the, the demand of the market. How do you survive in this space? I, I, I think this is where government comes in mm. and create, and you have mentioned earlier, the right enable policies and also well said. structured at the right time. It can be gradual. It's all about designing them well, mm. and then it will happen. I just want to conclude on this point, again, and insisting it's about market. When a farmer has a secured market. He will produce more. He will produce, and then it's about performance. He will produce quality more. Take the example of a big pro German producer, a maize, French maize producer, an Indian rice producer, all these people, a cotton producer in the US, all these farmers, they don't think, have to think about market. They have just to ensure what they produce is quality. They have already a very attractive market that sometimes is subsidized, but it's a, a guaranteed market. When this happens, it's only a question of performance along the value chain all the way down. But this means that um, APN, you have quite a great deal of work on your hands. Oh, not, yes. not quite. You have yes. a lot of work to yes. do uh, uh, to ensure. I mean, you're citing Arikos, you're citing, um, um, it was a Senegal. And we have a greater percentage of the, of the African countries struggling in this area that you're talking about. Oh. We need people, we need countries to be self sufficient. We need countries to understand the need to create a market for their local products, whether in, in, in whichever sector they are, not just a Greek. But all of the sectors, the micro, medium, small scale enterprises, uh, the startups, the small businesses need a secured market so that they will have the motivation. If they even have to go to the bank themselves and secure funding to produce, there will be the competition to, to ensure quality and all of that. And that's why I asked you earlier on whether you think African leaders who are coming together on your platform understand what you are envisioning, what you want to put across. Do they? Oh, yes. The, 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 the leaders, the head of states, they understand. But the, they will not do it themselves. It's about the whole chain from the very top all the way through the administration to the, from the top to the bottom of the pyramid mm -hmm. in terms of what we like to call policy. Uh, governments, mm. thinkers, mm. but it's also about the private sector that has to be put in a comfortable position to concentrate of performance so that there is an even competition among them. We don't want monopoly, but we need this continent has to be able to play with the same, uh, in this, be on the same condition as the others. This is happening in Asia. This is happening in the US. Mm. The only continent where it is not yet truly happening is our continent. So we need to fix this. You have mentioned about the massive task for APN, mm -hmm. APD. Yeah, yeah. We, you we, agree we, that we, you have a lot of work we, to do. We are convenience. 
we are convenience. We, we try to bring the right people around the table to ask the right questions and come up with actional plans, scalable. It, we, we have a convening role. Uh, and but but you, you can't just convene. You need to be able to make sure that you are getting results. If you are bringing, and I, I see from your, your paper, I, I have to look for it, that you, you are bringing precedents, not just, just representatives, of nations together. And if you are seeing the economy struggling, I'm sure your research points to all of the data that you are given here, that some economies are struggling. You are envisioning that with a secured market, with a common platform, with, with certain concerted effort of thinking, and in partnership with AFTA and certain major stakeholders, there has to be a relief on these economies. So you can't just convene the head of states and expect them to go back, to, back into their countries. So I was going to ask you whether you have partnerships with certain state institutions in individual countries, or you are looking forward to partner with them, and to make sure that what you have sent to the EU, what have come out as, uh, of, of your convention as a community, you are seeing to the implementation of these things in those countries. Well, so yeah. that's why I say that you have a big task oh, yes, on your yes, head. Yes. Do you agree that you oh, have I, a big I task? I fully agree, and this is really what uh, the Secretariat is about, mm. is in partnership with mm. the relevant stakeholders mm. to follow, to convene, to... Um, to, to have a close relation with the critical stakeholder countries, the critical private stakeholders who are committed to this mm -hmm. and, and really being able to do follow-ups, convening and highlighting, supporting flagship projects. Mm -hmm. that, that is the whole activity of the Secretariat throughout the year. So it's not just convening, having everybody have a nice talk, and mm -hmm. then after mm -hmm. everybody pack, mm -hmm. a year after we come, we say the same thing. So, so that's why even though the, the, the task is big, the, the, the matters for discussions are wide, we are also zooming up with specific uh, thematic areas. This year, for instance, mm -hmm. at the APD 2024, the 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 the, the, the AP, APN leadership discussed and with this advisory board and there's really a very powerful advisory board from with people from across the continent. Mm. We we have among others great people such as Madame Zuma, the former <laughs> AU um, chair. Mm. Um, Amina Mohammed, who was the former Minister of Trade of Kenya, and, and, and really a, a few uh, good people. I understand also a few more are joining in. Mm. So, so the whole idea for the, for the, the, the Secretariat is really to identify this thematic. So this thematic this year will be related to agriculture and food security. That's mm. one. The second is related to natural resources, mm. focusing, highlighting both the petroleum, the hydrocarbons, and the mines. And it's value addition, how to give value to our natural resources. And the third thematic is industrialization as a mean to enhance inter-Africa trade. In doing so, we're going to have key part stakeholders, specialists from the private sector, from the DFI, from the commercial bank, with policy ministers, discussing for the first two days to come up and, and highlighting what are the critical issues, coming back to agriculture, until we fix on one side the policy and on the other side Irrigation infrastructure. Mind you that we are in an area of climate change while we are blessed with rivers, water resources. If we are able to fix these two policy, and somehow there's a link between the two, um, this is the way we'll... So we'll focus a lot on this, get the right example, focusing on what 
EGP is doing? EGP is doing 250,000 hectares of irrigation development per year for the last four years. They are doing as much as, they are doing more than the whole of the sub-Saharan Africa every year. There's a reason One for country. this. One country. One country. So let's look at this. Let us understand why they are able to do mm -hmm. it and why we are not able to do it. And that's why you have a big task. We, we, we have, but the, the task is challenging, interesting. But again, the Secretariat is not alone. We have partnerships. It's a convening. And people, when they meet, they want to continue testing, ID, come together to action, bankable projects, DFIs, when they understand. And to be honest, all countries on the continent will, are not going at the same speed. Mm -hmm. And being able to address the issues, the FCTA is, could, um, could create some tension for some countries. I mean, at the same time, what is in common with a country that has a 1 million population versus a country that has 300 million? <laughs> I mean, but... The, what, what is the difference? What, how can we move forward within the EQUAS looking at the three layers, which is country, regional economic blocks, continental level? Uh, uh, the, the second thematic is related to natural resources. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, today, is it safe and wise and acceptable that we are producing massive quantities of crude oil, but still we are importing from outside the refined continent, oil. refined oil in quantities. When we have our uh, iron ore, our bauxite... Our, we are talking uh, about lithium currently. Lithium. And, I mean, we have to give value to this. But for this, we have to take time. Nobody's going to do it alone. And I, our issue sometimes on the continent is about silos. It's about long-term focus. And this is where we have... On this term, maybe an issue with politics, where uh, when there is a change of minister or government, I mean, people feel that ah, is that thing. So it, it does not attract long-term investment, strategic plans. And it is not to say that we should do what the others are doing, but look at Singapore. Look at what Korea was 40 years ago, what they are today. They have strategic plans, long terms, that are not being rediscussed because there's a change and on. And, and, and they are progressing. You, mention, mention it. you need to add a political change. I mean, they don't have these problems because when we're in Ghana here, we do development plans, we don't stick to it because politics come in after every four years and we, we, we either abandon it or reorganize it or come in with the manifesto. Um, which now becomes a new development plan and so on and so forth. But if I may, it is the same in the whole of our, on the whole of continent. So yes, you mentioned about Ghana. Yes, I'm, I'm quite familiar with Ghana, but I can tell you that somehow it is the case for all, literally all. And the few that come out with that, I... I I, I would not it, not, it would not be fair for me to name them <laughs> here at this table, but there are a few that are doing pretty well in yeah. terms. Uh, um, unfortunately, we didn't put the phone number out today, but somebody has sent me a text whether you are not going to be political, and that's why I insisted that you add the political bit of it when there is a change of government and so on and so forth. I'll also ask you about whether you are ready for the task ahead, and that's why... I asked whether you appreciate the enormity and how big a task you have, not just as the CEO yourself. I see, I see my senior colleague, Prince um, Moses, here supporting you um, throughout, and I've been having conversations with him. And I know that, I mean, forward-thinking person, a team like that, if you have him with other people that I know, you should succeed or you will be inching towards realizing your dream. When I come back from the break, I will ask you whether you are ready, you and your team, you are ready for the task ahead. And then I will ask you about politics also, because there are people, when I saw the video, I was expecting to see um, the entire video, but my people just cut 
um, one part of it. I don't know whether it's because, because they saw Gabi, Tari Ochidakun, because so they wanted to hear his voice. But um, we'll come back from this quick break, and when we come back, um, I still have Jack Khan, the Chief Executive Officer of the Acting CEO of Africa Prosperity Network. And we are talking about the prosperity of Africa. He's been talking about the fact that we need secured markets and we need proper or properly implemented rules and regulations in our economic and trade space. This is the bottom line. You want to stick and stay with us? We'll be right back. You all come back from the break. We still have Jakan, the acting CEO of African Prosperity Network here. And uh, I am coming, we're almost rounding up. But um, let, me, let me ask him the question I was asking. I'll come back into the main discussion, whether you and your team are ready for the task ahead. Yes, we, we are ready because we are not alone. Really, when I say that we have as institution partner with an institution, the FCFTA and all its members, so literally all ministries of, of uh, trade industry on the continent as their key partners, but access to a massive network of people, DFIs. Can you imagine all the power of Afrexim Bank, Africa Development Bank, uh, Badea? I'm talking about our own African development banks, but the academia, so we're not alone. And even only at the Secretariat, even though we are just a team of about 20 people, we have partnerships, we have subject matter experts, we have access to, we, we, we have contracted uh, tens of subject matter experts, uh, specialists in areas, consultants, and also highlighting a few uh, each year projects, actionable. Look at the pro uh, uh, projects such on the road, the Praia Abidjan Corridor, mm -hmm. the Abidjan Nigeria Corridor. Mm -hmm. These are some that will be highlighted. The Coco Initiative, Ghana, Côte d'Ivoire, where three countries together. So in doing, in deploying, and being the place to ask the difficult questions. Mm -hmm. I mean, clearly we are not doing things as we should do them, but we are also doing good things. We have leadership. I mean, when you look at our leaders, you name them, some are, are really very, have delivered. Uh, so it, it's about, I, I, I think, uh, yes, it's a massive task, but again, we are not alone. It's really a consortium to deliver. And we are a sweet, convenient place. You're confident of delivering. And one of um, the, the issues that have come up is um, what um, we'll describe as a colonial era commercial arrangement. And um, you look at the structures of the economies, and they haven't much changed, pretty much changed from how it was um, some time back or since the colonial times that um, the structure of the economy naturally favored the, our colonial masters. Even though we had independence almost in or all on the continent of Africa, the arrangement, if you look at um, Cote d'Ivoire, for example, the structure of the economy, um, their, their finances being controlled by, by all the French countries surrounding Africa are naturally controlled or virtually controlled by France, which they are trying to wean themselves from. And these are some of the economic problems we have, which you are trying to address. Yeah, yes, and I think this is the purpose of having on our continent a sweet space, convening space, mm -hmm. where we can address these issues. I would say yes, as you have just mentioned, uh, we are inheriting from the last 60 years mm -hmm. of agreements set from the... But that was 60 years ago. Mm -hmm. It was not yesterday. So I, I really believe that United, and both at regional and continental level, we can really push the agenda for this needed theory of change because it has to change. So yes, 
it is an issue, but I sincerely believe that United, and this is the purpose of this compact, to set the basis for this theory of change. And it can be done, and we have no other choice. And funnily, the rest of the world even needs this to happen for our continent. Mm -hmm. And we are seeing what is happening on the Mediterranean with the kids going there. We are seeing what is the impact when there's a war in Ukraine, Russia, how it impacts us. Uh, was it President Kagame who was saying that it, it is really shocking to see that the fact that a nation of 40 million people are at stake in mm -hmm. New York has such an impact on a 1.4 billion population? Mm. Uh, we we see that, and I'd like to quote also Dr. Adesina coming and saying, we cannot feed ourselves with hope. Uh, so so we, we have to walk the talk, and, and I think that there's no other choice but to move on. And by doing so, we have to address the issues, and this is where revisiting, setting policy that suit our development mm. and making sure that we implement them. That's, that's, that's and what that is. is. Because even the, the same question I asked, you have if, even in its new form, you have China trying to take over certain parts of the economies of Africa, you have a struggle. Yes. Um, Asia, Europe, America is mm. struggling for, for, for control in mm. Africa. Mm. So even if it, it becomes dynamic, even if it changes, it's still changing in that same economic structure and form. Please, please let me tell you, let them try, keep trying. You know, honestly, when I hear that Senegal or Côte d'Ivoire are like obeying to the French colonial master, I'm saying, no, it is not the case. Yes, maybe there are some advantages that could be rediscussed on specific, but it is not the case. Mm. When I hear that China is acquiring our land or taking over our mines in Africa, I'm saying not really. Yes, in some cases, contracts were not well duly negotiated, but it is not the case. We are still today in control of our destiny. And when I hear about land grab, I mean, land grab can hardly exist. I mean, can somebody can take a concession of 200,000 hectares of foreigners, but when they come to take the farmers underground, we'll tell the people, no, who are you coming for? Who gave you the land? It's ours. Go away. So I, I think we are, we, are, we are not necessarily always representing correctly these geopolitical dynamics. Mm -hmm. We are still owners of our destiny. For, for the purposes of time, let me come to the program itself. Uh, you, you have slated it for the end of this month. When exactly is it? And of course, even though you've shown me, you've indicated four thematic areas that you're focusing on. What, under what topic are you, are you having your discussions this year? So the topics are agriculture, food security, mm -hmm natural resources, mm -hmm. hydrocarbon, and mine, and their value addition. And the right. third is industrialization as enhancement of the inter-trade right. agreement. And we will be looking at critical enablers, which are ICT, and zooming a lot on the interoperability how to make sure that driving and taking advantage of one area on which the continent is in advance on others, which is mobile money transaction over the rest of the world. We are much far away mm -hmm. from many mm -hmm. other, from all, literally all other areas. How that we can push that interoperability so that payment can be effected from private sector across the continent. So the ICT. The second is related to finance. We have know that all our regions, countries, uh, have reached a level of indebtedness. And uh, this is the case for most of our countries 
on the continent. What are the other solutions for financing, blended financing? What are the models? And what are the current critical projects that have been successful ruling this approach? And the third uh, it is related to uh, infrastructure, both road, land, and air infrastructure, how to connect our people and our goods. Uh, so, so these are the thematics. It's going to be during the two days. And the third day is that business leader. Uh, and we will have a number of cross-cutting edge and thematic areas, use, empowerment, employability, uh, women in business. Uh, we're going to have investment promotion agencies, side events, roundtable meeting. And the whole idea is to take all this with the outcome on day two for presentation on the third day to get the heads of states and the business to commit to it. and the DFI to commit. And from there, we'll make sure that, and that will be a big role of the Secretariat, together with a number of the, the partners, to, to make them, to make, I wouldn't say I don't want to threaten, but make people accountable <laughs> to, to really follow. And yeah. next year, we'll see where we are. And, and realizing that not all the countries go at the same speed. All countries don't have the same kind of same leadership. And the people who can implement... All countries don't have the same governance because governance is Even still the an issue ability. on that continent. Mm -hmm. Governance, good governance, is still an issue in many, many countries on this continent. And without good governance, we'll go nowhere. You mentioned about instability, political instability. We've been seeing what has happened in a number of countries on the continent mm. over the last few months. And unless we find a solution, this will keep simply increasing uh, and so on. Let me ask you, the 25th to 27th, um, where is it happening? It's at a, a brief. It is um, happening at the presidential lodge in Aburi. Okay. Uh, over the last three is days. Is everybody invited, or you? Yes, people, you need to be invited. You, you, you know, come. you you need to register. Uh, the the secretariat is very reactive, and again, I would like to to say that it is truly a partnership between the presidency, and I insist, presidency. Mm of Ghana, AFCTA Secretariat, and the APN Secretariat. So everybody is most welcome. People, so you can go to APN's website and do your registration now if you want to be part of the African Prosperity Dialogue. We're happening on the 25th day of January to the 27th day of January. You've heard from the CEO himself what it is going to be and how exciting it's going to be, the kind of people that are coming there. If you're a business leader, a business owner, you want to be part of this, very good initiative, please do well to join. If we get the link, we'll put it up on. But when you visit APN's website, you'll find all the information there. We have had uh, a discussion more mostly on the economy. So if you want to register, it is event.africaprosperitynetwork.com. Event.africaprosperitynetwork. So it's one event.africaprosperitynetwork.com. Please do the registration. We'll be there. We'll have a conversation. We'll network. And of course, we'll have the communique which will enforce African governments to implement for the total emancip emancipation, of course, and the growth of Africa. I've had here Jack Khan, the acting CEO of Africa Prosperity Network, tonight talking to us about a mirage of... Uh, uh, a number of issues on, on the continent. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you so much. For and then thank you very much for watching. Unfortunately, we couldn't allow your messages and views in. Maybe when they are done with the program, we'll get back to him and we'll allow you to contribute to it. Have a very good evening. My name is Kwasi Afriya. This is the bottom line.